So now that I finally have power back after the hurricane, it's time to end the Mult Charming debate. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most, AVLR32 here, and destroy the ever-living Mole Charmy Boo Boo Stain. That just sounds nasty. Off of that, like and subscribe button as we climb even higher. The 1500 ladder, I just want to dive right on into it. I'm sorry I haven't uploaded. I lost power because of Hurricane Milton. That's the real scoop phase, ladies and gentlemen. Anyways, hope you all having a fantastic day. Hope you all were safe from the storm, if you got hit by it even. I wanted to talk about the Mole Charming debate. Everybody and their mama out here talking about it. Uh, and Robbie Cole's made seven videos, five videos, maybe even 10 videos now about it. It's $150. Now, I bought a case of Rage of the Abyss, and I spent $1,010 after taxes, but we made $1,300, so it's fine-ish. But I did pull three more Charmy. I only pulled two Deception, which kind of sucks as my editing software loads up. Um, but I pulled my three more Charmy. Now, <sighs> How does Mulcharmy Fualos, or however it's pronounced, affect the game? Here's the thing. I think that after the playtesting that I've done, I think that Fualos is still better than Max C, right? And it's crazy because I've seen some people online talking about how they're just going to stick with Master Duel, aka Master Shits. I don't know why you'd want to play in an even worse format, but you do you, Sugar Boo Bear. I think that Mulcharmy Fualos has a lot to offer when it comes to balance. The issue is that when it comes to a casual level, do you think that little Timmy is going to go out and buy a case of Rage of the Abyss? No. Do you think that they're going to go out and spend possibly $600 plus on a playset of Fualos? No. Is someone going to go buy one just to have it be a cross-out target? Probably not. And the thing is, is that decks that are more rogue, decks that summon from the extra deck a lot that really get hit by Fualos are the decks that suffer the most. And the thing is, is that not everybody has a bunch of money to blow on this game. I spent a thousand dollars on a case, even though I don't have any big events coming up because of the fact I figured I can make good money off of it. And I did. I bought it for a thousand and I've made over 1300. So there's like a three to $400 profit there at this point. But the issue is, is that I saved up money months in advance. And this is something that, to play devil's advocate, I'm always telling people in my videos. If you're newer to the channel, maybe you haven't seen my older content. But this is shit that I always say in my videos. When you see a card get revealed on YGO Organization, Twitter, my channel, shameless plug, ready for duel, whatever, on Facebook, you know, whatever. You start saving money the moment that drops. If you're able to, you know, have the funds to do, to do that. Obviously, not everybody does. In a perfect world and when in, and in an economy that isn't just liquid dog water. Uh, <laughs> this doesn't make any sense. Liquid ass. How about that? Uh, in, in an economy that's not bad, you see a card get revealed and say like Supreme Darkness. Like they just revealed uh, like I think more water support or something. They revealed more Azamina support, which actually looks really broken. That zero attack, 4,000 defense fusion seems crazy. Um, but that's got revealed, right? We get Supreme Darkness, I think in January. So you should already be saving your money to get cards from that set. Whether it's you want to get a case or you want to get singles, you need to start saving your money. Whether it's 10 bucks a week, five bucks a week, whatever so then that way it doesn't hit your wallet as hard and so to play devil's advocate you could be doing that right at the same time should a card ever be a hundred and at this point fifty dollars for one copy of flawless really it's like 146 but what's four dollars because you know your ass is going to get charged for shipping so you might as well just call it 150 should a single card be 150 hell to the no <laughs> I'll even say it for the people in the back. Hell the, to the no. That that should never happen. And the thing is, it goes to show how powerful of a card Fualos is. And what's interesting is that cards like Moltrami Perulia dropped in price. Still at like 120 to 150 for a play set compared to 150 for one copy of Fualos. But these cards are absolutely going to need reprints. Problem is, I don't think we're going to be seeing reprints for these cards anytime soon at least not until maybe if we're lucky next year's mega tins and it's a shame because there's already a lot of people i see y'all in my comment section who are very unhappy with the game and a lot of people have gone to retro formats because of it now going to retro formats i think is a whole 
you know, argument in of itself because you're still supporting the game. But when it comes to competitive play, I mean, hurricane or not, bad economy or not, the attendance is going to suffer. And, you know, to quote what one of my opponents said at the regional, I talked about this before, I believe in my White Forest deck profile. The guy said, I'm trying to get my invite now before Rage of the Abyss drops so I don't have to play in a toxic format. Because people don't want to deal with Snake Eyes as Amina. Maybe they don't want to deal with Fualos. Whatever the case may be, people don't want to deal with it because it's just baby back bullshit. And so to play the other half of the Devil's Advocate instead of just, hey, save your money, the other half is, yeah, the card's broken and you need it to play at a competitive level. You need three copies, especially since most decks can play it. I'm going to be playing three copies in my Snake Eyes as I mean to deck because if I go first, I can just play Deception, tribute the Mole Charmy, and then I have full combo. Like, it doesn't matter. It's not a brick in that sense. And so, yeah, you can cross out it, but you got to have a copy of it. And it's just, it's not good. It's really not. And I, I don't think people are going to necessarily want to sit back and say, okay, I'm playing a deck that really gets hurt by Fualos. I'm going to immediately play three Ash, three Droll if you're not hurt by Droll, because as soon as they draw, you can Droll them and then they don't draw anymore. Um, and I'm going to play Call By. I mean, that's cards in your deck that maybe not everybody wants to commit to their deck. So I see both sides of it. Now, with that being said, when it comes to doing deck profiles... It's actually also kind of an issue when doing deck profiles because now, and I guarantee you this is going to happen because you've got these smooth brain pro players who think that they're a god at this game, but then they don't show a side deck because they want to keep it secret. Like, just don't even do the fucking deck profile. I bitched about that in the past, but I'm just saying. Uh, you're going to have players do deck profile and then they're going to say, okay, yeah, this is the deck profile. Thanks for watching. And then you're going to get like 20 comments in the video. How do you play around Fualos? What's the line that you take when you get hit by Fualos? So now, even on a content creator perspective, it's kind of rough because now we've already been hitting the mark of like 10 to 15 minute deck profiles to talk about text and choices and things in the meta. Now deck profiles could easily be like 20 minutes because you're going to do your deck profile. You're going to talk about your text. You're going to show like a base, like, you know, no hand trap combo. Then you're also going to have to show what your end board looks like after Fualos because you know people are going to comment and be like, oh, this deck is garbage because you didn't show a Fualos build. Or, oh, this deck is garbage because it loses to Fualos. Like, that's going to be a thing now. Like, people are, even like, I was doing it with Flunder. Granted, Flunder is just absolutely garbage now. But especially now with Mulchami Perulia being a thing, if you play Flunder, you pretty much lose to Perulia. So it's like, if you're doing a Flunder profile, like, you know people are going to comment and be like, oh, well, this deck is garbage because Perulia exists. And, like, if you're playing, say, I don't know, a junk synchron electric boogaloo synchro 30 times a turn video deck profile whatever people are gonna be like oh this deck is garbage because Fualos exists and you're not playing outs to it like so uh, i say all that because even from a content creator standpoint it's kind of rough like no one really wins in this equation whether you're a casual player a competitive player a content creator whatever and so <sighs> I really don't know at this point what to fully think about the card. Do I have three copies? Yes, because I'm a competitive player. I don't really want to take a break from the game because I really want to play Snake Eyes as Amina because the deck is actually a lot of fun. And keep in mind, I didn't play Snake Eyes last format. So like this is my first foray and actually playing the deck competitively. But it's also very unhealthy that they made the card a fucking secret. And it's a rare in Japan. Now, this has been an issue for years, so it's not like I'm bringing up something new. Konami's never going to change their product. Remember, I've talked about before about how Pot of Duality was, I think, a rare or a super rare in the OCG when it got released in Duel's Revolution, and it was a $120 secret rare here in the TCG. Yeah, that was, that was rough, and you had to play three copies of that card. That card was busted when it first dropped. So... All of this to say that I get where everybody's coming from and your best bet is to wait for a reprint or, I don't know, pull a Trident Dragon and borrow it from a friend or just play something that doesn't care about Fualos. Maybe you should play Flunder. Maybe you should play, I don't know, Tempai and just don't play Fualos. Like, honestly, Tempai, you gotta admit, is kind of a budget deck now. Like, even if you're not playing Fualos, if you're playing Shifter and Perulia... That's pretty good. Like, instead of uh, Fualos, play Droll. Ubel doesn't really give a shit about Droll, but if you're hitting Shifter, then they're not going to be able to play the ball game anyway. So 
you have options in that regard available to you. Is it a perfect format? No. I think this format definitely has problems, and I've talked about how Yu-Gi-Oh! is in a terrible format currently, and I don't think Rage of the Abyss helps. But at the end of the day, I think the main thing that the only that people can do is wait for a reprint. And being able to actually kind of take like a week off from the game, I think has helped me a lot. I'm actually really excited to play and like maybe hit people with like two flawless and they crap their pants because they can't play or they're just going to give me a bunch of draws. Maybe we'll see things like heavy slump return. I've talked about the story on the channel before. 2013 Dragon Ruler format had seven cards in hand. The opponent heavy slumped me and they were playing stun. That was some bullshit, ladies and gentlemen. Let me know what you think about all this down in the comments below. I know everybody and their mom is talking about Mold Charmy, but I want to make this to just end the whole Mold Charmy thing. Either get the card or don't, or just play a different deck, or better yet, take a break and don't give Konami yo co money. Guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.